Sometimes, when I close my eyes, I can't see. Today, I'm going to compare this $30 radio to this $5,000 radio. Yeah, I said $5,000 radio. Now, I'm not going to string it out like so many other YouTubers would do, comparing a $30 Baofeng UV5R to a Motorola $5,000 radio. It's kind of like comparing a Yugo to a Bugatti. It's no contest. So if that's all you wanted to know, you can leave now. But if you want to learn the difference between a $5,000 radio and a $30 radio, then stick around. You might just learn something. So allow me to compare a $5,000 radio to a $30 radio. The common Bufwang UV-5R. As I mentioned, the Bufwang UV-5R cost about $30. It is a ham radio, but some of the older models also transmit on GMRS frequencies, even though the FCC does not like when you do that. But it is a ham radio, and to operate this radio, without making the FCC sad, you must have a ham radio operator's license. Unless you are using this radio in an emergency to protect life or property. And then the FCC allows you to use this radio or any radio at your disposal, no license required. That's why so many preppers, people preparing for shit hit the fan situations, that's why so many of them stock a bunch of UV5Rs because they're cheap and you are permitted to use them in a shit hit the fan situation. So when their lives depend on it most in a real emergency situation, they're gonna be placing their lives in the hands of this $30 radio. The Bufwang UV5R is made for occasional weekend use. It usually outputs around five watts when you're lucky. It is not designed to be waterproof or dustproof or drop proof or high temperature proof. Although you may drop yours and it may survive, it is just as likely that if you drop it, it will not survive. The quality control when they shit these things out of the child slave labor camp in China is terrible. So you never really know what you're gonna get. It has a tiny battery that doesn't last very long and they usually wear out within a year or two. Mine have all worn out pretty quickly. I have a few of them and I've had to replace them all. The charger that it comes with is flimsy plastic and the LEDs on all of mine have stopped working or started flashing erratically or incorrectly. They still charge, but they just don't last. They are not high quality, reliable equipment. The Bufwang UV5R cannot do anything digital. It doesn't do anything fancy. It is a basic RF FM radio. No support for encryption or anything other than just plain old-fashioned radio waves. And it is notoriously famous for many spurious RF emissions, which have been known to make many sad hams very, very sad. The UV5R is the epitome of cheap Chinese junk that so many sad hams complain about. But it's only $30, and when you push this button to talk, your friend, 100 yards away, half a mile away, will usually hear what you say, most of the time. This is a Motorola XTS 5000. And when purchased new, this radio cost $5,000. Allow me to repeat that for everybody with a short attention span. This radio cost $5,000 thousand dollars five thousand dollars now motorola no longer manufactures this radio but it is still one of the most sought after handheld radios in the world and that is why a refurbished one will cost 500 to 800 dollars and even old broken down ones half work and half broken ones that you find on ebay or craigslist are still two to four hundred dollars you can get fully refurbished ones virtually brand new, like new, from a place called Kemp Wireless in Oregon. That's in the United States. It just so happens that I have purchased a few radios from Kemp Wireless in the last few weeks, all of them refurbished, 30-day warranty, like brand new. Actually, the battery and the charger are brand new, but the uh, radio itself is a refurbished radio. And getting a fully refurbished one with a 30-day guarantee, even though it costs more, 
is much better than sending your money to some stranger on eBay or Craigslist and hoping you don't get burned or stuck with a piece of junk. As a matter of fact, I like this place, Kent Wireless, so much that I talked to the owner and he has set up a special discount for all Not a Rubicon viewers. Non-affiliate link below. I bet you weren't expecting to hear that. You can go to that web page and look at all the options for this radio or other radios. And if you want to buy one with a discount, with the Not a Rubicon discount, you will have to call them on a telephone, just like in the olden days, and talk to one of their fully English speaking human beings and give them the discount code Not a Rubicon. Not a Rubicon. So that you can receive the Not a Rubicon discount. Now allow me to disclose that Kemp Wireless did not send me this radio or the other radios that I purchased in the last few weeks. I just purchased the 110 watt mobile version of this radio. I'll talk about that in another video. But all the radios that I purchased from Kemp Wireless, non-affiliate link below, I have paid full price for. And if you purchase something using the code NOTARUBICON, over the telephone, I receive no kickback, no commission, no nothing. And yet I still went out of my way, working tirelessly to get that discount code for you because you are my favorite viewer. So what makes this radio so much more expensive than this radio? Motorola designed these radios for public safety agencies. And for many years, these radios were used by thousands of fire departments, police departments, sanitation departments, departments, this is English, schools, federal agencies, you name it. If it was a federal or government agency, public safety agency, if they had a radio, chances are it was one of these. Motorola designed this radio to be used all day, every day, day after day after day in very rigorous conditions. And many people's lives literally depended on these radios. I don't mean that figuratively. Oh, my life depended on it. I mean, first responders, police, the true heroes, their lives literally depended on these radios. This one, my radio is refurbished. It's five or 10 years old. It came from a police department and it still works fine. And because it's refurbished, looks brand new, almost brand new. These things were designed to be dropped, sat on, spit on, rained on, and even shot at. If you want rugged and reliable, or if your life depends on when pressing this button, making, needing to make sure that it works, this is the radio for you. Most people probably would not trust their lives to this radio, would you? Now, before you completely fall in love with this radio, allow me to mention some of the FCC rules and regulations around the use of the Motorola. XTS 5000 radio. The Motorola XTS 5000 is a Part 90 FCC Part 90 radio, what many of us experts call a private land mobile radio. To use this type of radio on a regular day-to-day -day basis, meaning not in an emergency situation, you need a business license, which is what I operate under. That's what I use when I'm using this radio. So all of you sad hams out there that were getting ready to leave a comment telling me that I'm not allowed to use this radio. I am allowed to use this radio. And in an emergency situation, so are you. And that's why so many preppers use or would like to use a radio like this, because in a true shit hit the fan situation, they can use it without worrying about breaking any FCC rules or regulations. Now for all of you GMRS fans out there, this radio is not FCC part 95 E type experience accepted. That means it was not made for use on GMRS frequencies. However, because the spectral purity of this radio is so much better than pretty much any GMRS radio you can buy, the FCC has stated publicly that they will not go after people simply using this type of radio on GMRS frequencies. In fact, this radio, this type of radio is very popular amongst the GMRS cool kids. But as I have stated in many of my videos, do not take my word for it. I am not a lawyer. I'm just a YouTube hobo that likes to play with radios and do not take anyone else's word for it on YouTube, whether in the comments or on a video. You should read the FCC rules and regulations yourself and make sure that you understand them. All right, back to talking about the radio and what makes this radio so expensive, even for a used one. To start, this radio has what us radio experts call extremely high selectivity. 
selectivity. That means if you're in an urban environment or somewhere where there's a lot of other radios, high power transmitters, other walkie talkies, television, transmitters, radio, whatever, other electricities in the air, they won't interfere with this radio because it selects and narrows out what it's listening to so well. Try that with one of these and you'll get a lot more static and issues. Here you can get a closer look at the radio. You'll see that it has a very large battery, 4,500 milliamp hours. The battery lasts all day. If you're talking on the radio, if you're just listening to the radio, it lasts for days, very long lasting battery. And it is a smart battery if you get the smart battery option and comes with a smart charger. So the battery and the charger actually talk to each other, keeps it from overheating. It'll make the battery last a lot longer. Pretty much the same thing that most smartphones do today. You can also get a battery eliminator, which would plug in here instead of the battery and allow you to plug it directly into your car, your cigarette lighter, or a solar power system. The XTS 5000 meets portable military standards, 810, C, D, E, and F. I have no idea what that means, but I do know that none of my other radios meet those standards. And I also know that someone will leave a comment explaining what military standard 810 C, D, E, and F actually means. The sound quality through the speaker is outstanding. I can't really demonstrate it here because everything sounds like crap through YouTube. The speaker is very loud. You can turn it up all the way. It has no distortion, no clipping. It sounds great all the time. Remember, it's made so that the police can still hear it over all that shooting. And based on the reports that I get back from people that I've talked to using this radio, the sound quality, the transmitting sound quality is very, very good. Everybody tells me that when I'm talking on this radio, I sound like Joe Rogan, not like Pee Wee Herman when I'm talking on this radio. You'll see it's got several buttons and all of the buttons and knobs, everything are fully customizable and programmable, including these down here, can all be programmed to do whatever you want, either when you buy it or if you're able to get the software yourself and do it. I'll talk more about the software in a moment. In the meantime, allow me to tell you more about what this radio can do that my Bufwang UV5R cannot do. And bear in mind that it does way more than what I'm gonna talk about here in this video. I'm only talking about the things that interest me that I think will probably interest you but I'm only scratching the surface of what this radio can do. So one of the interesting things is that it supports MDC. That's like caller ID for radios. So if you're talking to another radio, a Motorola radio or any radio that supports MDC 600 or MDC 1200, that's what the experts call it. The radio can be programmed to send an ID out so that it will show up on the screen. Allow me to demonstrate. So I'm gonna call my friend Chris, Chris, who's the real hero of these videos and demonstrate what that MDC looks like. It can do other fancy things. You can send pages directly to other radios. You can send messages to radios. You can receive messages of if they're this type of radio. This is a digital radio. Analog, just like we're used to, but also digital, not DMR. This is a P25, sometimes referred to by the experts as Project 25, a P25 digital radio. P25 is what most, if not all, most, police departments and fire departments use. So you can talk to other people using a P25 radio digitally, either directly through Simplex or on a repeater. And anybody listening using a non P25 radio like one of these, or even a DMR radio, all they would hear is digital static. They would not be able to hear what you're saying unless they had a P25 radio or P25 scanner. Not the same as DMR. Anyone listening on their fancy ham radio DMR would not be able to hear what you're saying using one of these radios. Anyone trying to listen using a regular analog radio would just hear this. And it also does trunking and all those fancy things that the police departments and fire departments, all those federal agencies do including the big one, encryption. This radio does 
encryption. And it does encryption right out of the box. You do not need a key loader or special software or anything. It's all built in and ready to go. All you need to do is put your encryption key into the radio, put the same encryption key in the same type of radio with the same type of encryption in the other radio, set up a channel to use encryption. You now have encrypted communications for all your encryption needs. Now out of the box, the encryption that it uses is called Advanced Digital Privacy, ADP as Motorola calls it, and that has 40 encryptinating bits. Now, some people, some people will say that 40 bits of encryptonite is not enough because it can be easily cracked by an expert or someone that really knows what they're doing after only a few hours. And for those people, no problem because you can purchase an add-on that supports AES-256 encryption. And that should provide plenty of encryptinating bits for pretty much everybody. And now some people, some people are still no doubt going to leave comments saying that AES-256 is still not enough encryptonate, encryptonite, encryptonation bits. It's not good enough because it can still be cracked. And that might be true, but if you need that much encryption, you're probably doing things that you should not be doing. Now, despite my newly misplaced adoration of this radio, it is not perfect. It still has some downfalls and the UV-5R can still beat it in some ways. First is the price. The price is an issue. This is not a inexpensive radio. Second is the FARs. You cannot talk much further on this radio than you can on this radio. You can talk further. I got half a mile or so more range in most cases, the places I've used it when I tried testing it against this radio. The Boofwang only weighs a few grams. I don't know, it's, it's a very light radio. Very easy to carry around, clip it to your belt, because the chicks love that and walk around. You won't even notice you have it. The XTS 5000 is like attaching a brick to your belt. It weighs a pound or two. It is a substantial radio. But one other advantage of this radio over the Bufuang UV-5R is that it can be used as a weapon. The only way to hurt somebody with this thing is to poke them in the eye. This will do some serious skull cracking. If I drop my Boofwang in the lake and lose it, I don't care. It was 30 bucks, so what? This, this thing ain't going near no damn lake. And finally, the software. CPS is what Motorola calls it. Stands for something. Somebody will leave a comment and let us know. The CPS software to use, uh, that you use to program this radio does not come with the radio if you buy it refurbished and it can be hard to get. And you also need a programming cable, depending on where you buy it from. Most of the times the cable is extra. If you do get the cable, it's like 30 bucks and you get a hold of the software. It is not your average consumer software. I've used pretty much all software for many, many radios and I've been able to figure them all out within a few minutes or an hour. I did not figure out how to use the software for this thing quickly. I'm still learning. It is very complex. I'm still learning how to use it. And that's with a lot of hand holding, hand holding from other people in my local radio group that are also still learning how to use it. The software is made for government agencies to manage huge fleets of these radios. They can program it remotely over the air, it just, it does a lot. And in order for that software to support a radio that does a lot, the software has to do a lot. It is very complicated, as I mentioned, and very many levels deep. It's a very deep software. You are not gonna learn how to use this software in just a few minutes or a few hours. And that's another reason why buying one of these radios from Kemp Wireless, non-affiliate link below, is so much better than getting one from eBay or some stranger on Craigslist because you'll have to talk to them on the phone. Make sure you give them the not a Rubicon discount code. They will make sure that they understand what you want to use your radio for and they'll make sure that it's pre-programmed and set up to do what you want it to do. You're not going to get that from some stranger on Craigslist. Now, as I have already mentioned more than once, there is a lot more to this radio than what I've covered here. I have only touched the surface. I have merely scratched the surface. So if you own a Motorola XTS or similar radio, or if you've used one, perhaps in your professional past, leave a comment and tell us some of the features that I've left out. There are many features that I have left out. If you have any questions about the Motorola XTS 5000 or the Boofwang, you know what to do.